was, that's about the sentiment for Windows 8. That is. <laughs> that really is. <laughs> wow, you know what I'm saying? It really is. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, I know we've talked about this before, but it's something that just begs talking about. It really does. The absurdity of it. For those who care, uh, there's sufficient talk that an RC for Windows 8 is on the way. I, uh, and enough stuff existed on Microsoft sites recently and was coming up in the Bing algorithm and so on. My guess is we're probably going to see a RC in the next 90 days, if not sooner. Um, but still, it's it's Windows 8. They're gonna. They're. They're going. They're, they're intent on going this way. They're gonna be. I mean, do. You, do you think we're gonna see this RC? I. I mean, if they're gonna release this year, or, uh, within the next month or so, is about when I would expect to see an RC. Honestly. I have no idea. But it should be. If, you, if your If your question is, will it be this year? I certainly think it will be this year. Well, and it, you would think they want it out at least six months before, so if there's anything like major in it, they can patch it before official release. Mm -hmm. when, when is the official announced, anyway? I thought they were... They haven't yeah. set a date yet, but if they're going to launch it this year like we all think, my guess is September or October. Alright. Maybe then by May. Maybe May or June. Ah. Maybe late June. Okay. Anyways, getting back to the. It, it, yeah, I see that you're saying, yeah, okay, so there's not going to. I'm reading that article, okay, because you're saying, okay, there's not going to be a professional version of Windows. Maybe not called Windows 8, is, is in my answer. Because I can't see Windows 8 working in the professional world. It's, 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 it's a consumer brand, it's not a. It is not um, a program. And it's kind of like back in the days of when we had Windows NT and Windows 98. Remember those days? It was like two different uh, animals, you know. It's um, maybe it won't be called Windows 8. I, I'm sorry, I can't see Windows 8 as the dev professional platform to be used as an OS. I mean, that's a it's a consumer friendly UI and nothing more. Especially m making it mobile, and that's a very sad, a very very sad thing. There's a um, something that I wanted to read from a funding that may not be on Windows, but it's certainly covering OS 10 and the the whole uh, what is it, this this whole mobile uh, is is our desktops merging into mobile and blah 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 blah. Well, if um, Microsoft has their way, they are. <laughs> find this thing. <clears throat> Where is it? I want to find this quote. And I remember reading it today. Ah, yes. And it's, the, it's titled uh, iOSification of Apple's Ecosystem. <laughs> and the Windows sub, Windows Phone 7 vacation of the Microsoft system. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 and basically, um, let me find the guy's quote. It's iOSification uh, it's basically there, okay. It says the isification of OS X is at this point inevitable, and anyone who doesn't see it or tries to ne to neglect it is either software blind or has some kind of interest in that way of thinking. So it's kind of like what I said. If iOS does fully go to iOS and they choose to now issue, in other words. Let's just all go backwards now. This, you know, I guess well, but not, you know what? We get on stuff. Apple and Microsoft for doing this. We get on Microsoft more because Microsoft's doing it worse. But honestly, look at some of the things Ubuntu did with Unity. This is an industry-wide thing. We are trying to turn it into a giant shiny button. <laughs> yeah, it's like we, we have hardware right now that outpaces software. Right. And our solution to that is rather than figure out how to make a good UI and figure out how to make stuff sign, we're just going to dumb it down. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and the thing that I find frustrating is that iOSification means you're making software even more limiting. 
Hmm? Oh, no, Mr. Bit. It's elegant and simple. <laughs> okay, you can have that for a, uh, like a consuming device. It's, that doesn't work for something that's going to create things. And... Uh, what, man, but, say, but, 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 but if we're still on our show... But, uh, but, but, but Bit, think about, about the people... Somebody stuck on... You know, I'll be stuck on older versions of Windows and OS X um, asking you Linux questions. You know, so it's, it, 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 it's, I think, a very sad, sad thing. Because if anything, iOS arbitrarily is extremely limiting the software. It has the ability to do more, but the software in itself, in the way it's written, is extremely limiting. Uh, this is know, honestly why very, I'm very, trying very, to learn C and C++ right now. One of the things I'm I'm becoming afraid I'm going to need to learn how to do myself in the next three to five years is I'm going to have to take either Linux and BSD and just build me an OS. I'm just going to have to build me an OS that I can actually work on. <laughs> no, you don't have to build an OS. I mean, you, it, the, the thing of it is, is that I think this is a very scary and sad thing. It helps people on one side of the spectrum, but... Let's, let's, let's be frank, a lot of consumers are also professionals in one regard or another. And perhaps on their consumer end, they do want something very simple and to the point to get those things done. But I guarantee you they don't want that same product to follow them to work. <laughs> well, and, and what's really funny is in the same way, there are some underpinnings. I mean, it's going to... One of the ways Windows 8, even though it's going UI-wise, iPhone-ish, it is going to have support for C and C++, you know, underpinnings for the programs for multi and so it, it programmers will be able to do what they want, but it's, I, I don't know, this is going to be interesting, it, especially given, uh, there's the UI changes they're making, and, and, and I, I, I agree with all the reasons you're saying there, it's going to be one of those, uh, but there's the other change where at the exact same time of doing this UI change, for the first time ever, Microsoft's going to be supporting ARM. And let's face it, the device that makes the most sense for the Windows 8 UI is a slate because of what it is. What are these slates probably going to be powered by? Probably the next gen ARM processors because of them coming out. This creates a really interesting question. That generation of ARM processors, and this article points that out, are not the uber, uber powerful ones yet. They're one step below those. Those are going to be coming out in 2013, 2014. They're not coming out this year. Which means you're going to be running something like a Tegra system, which isn't powerful enough to really do x86 emulation. And all the legacy Windows applications are going to be x86, x64. You know, it, it, Intel's pointing out, hey, people, you better start using Atom chips in those slates or Windows 8 ain't going to be able to run anything. Or it's, uh, it's, which is not the direction we want the industry to go. But it, it, I don't think they really thought this out. And I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing an almost instant buyer remorse for people who buy these Windows 8 things because they'll basically have bought a Microsoft iPad, and it'll be great for the first 30 to 90 days, and they'll go into the Windows 8 store and they'll get all those Metro apps, and then they'll try and do something else with it, and they'll go, oh, <laughs> uh, huh. I, I may be wrong, you know, it's, but I'm just, do, do, uh, I'm increasingly thinking Microsoft will not be able to pull this off. Y you and I both are. I, I don't know. It, it, I'm trying to think of a way that they can save this at this point where it's just not going to blow up in their face. We'll just see how it goes. You know, we're, we're obviously clearly not the majority anymore at all. Yeah, so. Yeah, I think we'll think differently. And, that, and that's not a positive comment. What, that people think differently? Yeah, I mean, no, I mean in other words, that are, that are uh, thinking different from the direction that we were going, making software multi-threaded, non-limited, uh, the power of, 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 of what 
Linux has been able to pr produce an enterprise and, and technology driven. Uh, those that prefer this facade uh, of, uh, oh, it's, it's nice and shiny and, and this bubblegum fluff will pay the price later. It's, it, you're going to hurt computing in the end. You know, I'm honestly wondering if at the end of the day that doesn't have something to do with the fact that the reality is even basic computing skills are a limited thing. You know, most people don't really understand the computers. That they're, in some cases, uh, sadly, and I have no idea why, because computers are not this complex today. You don't really have to know a lot to really understand a computer today. But it, it a lot of the average user, unfortunately, is intimidated by the yes. computer. Okay, but then I don't agree with the policy of let's dumb down the SAT test so that we can help everyone look better. Sorry, I don't agree with well, that. But, but that's what I'm getting at. Like, that's almost what the logic of the industry is. It's like, people are intimidating by this, so we need to make it as simple as a clock radio. Sure, there's, but see, they're there to make money, which is true, at the expense of losing computing power. So the thing of it is, is that I think both can be pursued, right? That, that, I mean, let, let Apple pursue that, that kind of thing, and not everybody gets so excited. That cash cow's not going to last forever. It's just not. And the thing of it is, is that eventually, once you do get people educated and they start to learn more, they're gonna they're gonna do exactly what how everyone else became geeks. We became geeks, and because we all started from zero and had to learn our way, whether whether we were doing spreadsheets or becoming a programmer or an accountant, what have you. We all then go, oh wow, this is actually limiting, and the whole book done and elegant, simple crap goes out the window. Yeah, it's we like want we want it to work and we don't want it to get in our way, damn it. Exactly. And, and, and and you know, even if you're not a geek, if you if anything you're using a computer for, once you start to get good at it, regardless of what it is, uh -huh. that limiting tool, you get that gets in your way and you want to rip it out of the screen and throw it away. Because exactly. it's in your it, it's now what's in your way. This is the reason I'm, I do not understand the industry's logic. I feel like they're trying to build a computer. Well, the industry's logic is simply answered. There's an extreme, extreme you know, amount, large amounts of money to be made right now. That's their job as a company to make money. I can't disagree with them doing that. But I'm, I'm more of my arguments are more based upon principle. If I were a company, Rusty, you damn bet you I'd be going after bubble gum and whatever because that's where. A lot of money is to be made. At the same time, though, I would also be Don't working. innovate! Regurgitate! <laughs> yeah. No, I would also be working, though, to, to push the envelope. I'd have, I'd have a consumer division and an enterprise division, technology division, to, to, to try to... Because one could help augment the other with R&D and pushing it rather than being so consumer-oriented um, and, and heavy in that amount and giving up other things. Well, you know what? The reality is there's nothing wrong with going consumer-oriented and stuff like this as long as you leave stuff dynamic enough that professionals, regardless of what type of professional they are, can still get under the hood, revamp, and tweak. The problem is, uh, increasingly, you know, that option is just going away across the board, and that's fail. Because not everybody is a fluff. Right. Exactly. And and and, and yeah. it's it's a it's a it's a bad it's it's. I, I'm convinced in the if the I'm convinced I'm I've, I'm becoming increasingly convinced that at some point I'm going to have to start buying ten to twenty thousand dollar computers to get work done. And the reality is I'm just going to have to pass those costs on to my clients. I'm going to go well. I could do this for five thousand dollars back in two thousand yada yada, but now that the industry's gone fluff and my tools are a niche market, I have to charge you more. And that's the true cost of the fluffification. You know, uh, uh, things like that will just wind up costing more because our tools will be a niche thing. So we'll have to charge more to cover the cost of those niche tools. We'll see. I mean, I don't know. It wasn't. We'll see if it becomes that. Big. I just think that. I'm, I'm just, I don't have a whole lot of faith of this tidal wave that we're riding right now uh, will last very long. So, 
Um, well, then, if you really think it's not going to last that long, that means you're guesstimating that Windows... Because, <laughs> I mean, for all intents and purposes, when Microsoft makes a change... I mean, here's what's going to happen. Windows 8's coming out later this year. Which means once all those Windows 7... I mean, you can't buy Windows XP right now. You can't buy Vista. Once all those 7 disks are gone off the shelf, and Microsoft says, No, we're selling Windows 8. No more Windows 7. The reality is, every computer out there is going to be Windows 7. I mean, well, Windows Microsoft, 8. What will happen is Microsoft will not have mass adoption. Um, and, and they're going to acquiesce just like they have done before. And Microsoft has always been known to do radical changes quickly. So no, you no, think no, this no, is no, going to no, be no, like another no, no. Vista where they're going to go, no, you'll buy Windows 8. And six months into the year, they're going, get your Windows 7! Get your Windows! Yeah, I mean, pretty much, yeah, exactly what happened with the effect of Vista. You know, they have to act it'll, it'll be the same thing. People are going to go, oh, hell no. And then we'll have mass adoption. And they go, oh, my God, what do we do? Well... Yeah, I, I remember that. Like, during the first 18 months of Vista, people were actually paying $100 more to get XP. <laughs> it was funny, almost. <laughs> it was, 